Um, Shabbat Shalom, my dear community. This week's parasha is called Truma, which means the gift. We read about the instruction given to the Israelites for the construction of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, where God's presence would dwell among them. The verse, the first verse says, Tell the Israelite people to bring me gifts. You shall accept gifts for me from every person whose heart is so moved. This is a very unique commandment from the Holy One because it doesn't really command anything specific. It doesn't say that people should bring a certain amount of gold and a certain amount of silver, but it says that people may bring something if their hearts move them. It is completely out of their free will that they may bring gifts and it was a communal act of giving freely in order to decorate the Mishkan and make it beautiful and worthy of God's presence. And according to the Torah, they brought a lot. The Ark of Acacia wood was to be decorated with pure gold, overlaid inside and out with gold molding round about. There were enough gifts to make the golden rings and poles of Acacia wood overlaid with gold. Two golden cherubim were to be placed on the ark, bowls, ladles, jars, and jugs made of pure gold and a golden menorah. The tabernacle was made of the fine twisted linen of blue, purple, and crimson yarns with a design of cherubim worked in them. The Mishkan was gorgeous and spectacular in the middle of the desert. And I'm sure that many of you know how does it feel to build a sanctuary? For many of you are the founders of this beautiful shul that was built by you and is worthy of the presence of Shina among us and that serves so many people who come here to worship, study, and to connect to each other and um, for Kiddush, of course. So, <laughs> so it's... Necess not necessary, it's not needed for me to explain to you the importance of giving gifts. You already know that. You're all amazing people whose hearts are already moved to share and to donate, either to shul or to less fortunate people who, who are uh, in need of support. So I, there is nothing for me to teach you about. You already know all of that because for years and years and years you were supporting the shul and this wonderful Mishkan. And this is the direct meaning of this Parsha. We all give what we can to build and sustain our sanctuary in our community. But the words of the Torah, they always conceal a deeper meaning. Meaning that might not be so apparent when you read through the descriptions of the physical requirements for the Mishkan. So the verse that we are focusing on today, you shall accept gifts for me from every person whose heart is so moved, caught the attention of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the Holy Zohar as he delved into the deeper meaning behind it. Rabbi Shimon explains that accept gifts for me from every person whose heart is so moved means that to aspire towards the Holy One, blessed be He, we must not strive in vain and empty-handed, but rather make efforts according to our strengths. Each and every one of us has a strength deep down inside, and only we know what that strength is. This is not the strength of gold and silver, but our unique abilities to strive for a closer connection with the Holy One. Rabbi Shimon brings another verse from the Torah to support this idea. This is a verse from the end of the Torah, from the book of Dvarim. Everybody shall give as they are able, according to the blessings of Hashem, your Elohim, which he has given you. The Holy One gave each one of us a blessing according to our individual qualities and the paths in our lives. That is what it means that no one should come empty-handed, but according to our blessings, with the blessings that we already have. So to explain that, let me give you a, a practical example. 
some of us, some of us, might have a desire, maybe, to improve our davening practice. You might think, I really want to come to the daily minyan every day. But something always stands in my way. It might be a family life, maybe a weather, maybe I want to travel, or maybe I just feel too tired to come. But each of us knows the limits of our strengths and the blessings that we have. Well, maybe I can't come every day, but maybe I can come once a week. Or if not once a week, then maybe once a month. Or maybe I can't come that regularly at all, but I can look in our manishma and see which of my friends had your side this week. Maybe I can make sure to come on that day to support my friend, to have a minion, because there is nothing more. Like This is heartbreaking to see when a person came to recite mourner's Kaddish and there is no minyan and they cannot recite it. So maybe I can do that. And it's not every day, but I will be there for my friend. So instead of seeing the obstacles, we can see the blessings. The blessings of being with someone who really needs it. Blessing for caring a person who can perform mitzvah because of our uh, action. Or a blessing to have a car and good health <laughs> to drive it to the shul. And uh, maybe I feel that I can't come because I'm blessed with so many children and grandchildren and they come to my home and I just can't come to Minyan. But you actually can come with them together. Right? You can bring them. The service is not so long. The daily minion, it's maybe 20 minutes. You can bring your grandchildren, you can bring your children, and let them learn more about the service, and let them improve their davening skills. Because this is the best way to instill in them the value of responsibility towards sustaining the shul and the Jewish nation at large. We always need people who can lead prayer, and I want to see younger generations step in and learn how to do it. But if you don't bring them, they're not going to do it, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so that our shul, the beautiful mishkan that you build, will continue to stand and thrive and grow. We have enough blessings for that. Look, you have a sort of a maybe blessing even of having a young rabbi who is eager. <laughs> A blessing of sorts, eager to meet new faces and study with them together. All we need to succeed is to strive for God and not come empty-handed, but to use our blessings, our potential, and our strengths. Our shul is in great need of support from people, not gold and silver, but our spiritual gifts. We need people for minyan, we need people for shiva visits, we need people to lead the services and to teach young generation. Because no money will buy the future of our shul. Only the pure-hearted efforts of each and every one of us. On this Shabbat, I wish all of us to recognize our blessings and strive toward God. It is necessary to make efforts as befitting and according to our strengths in the pursuit of the holy endeavor of sustaining our congregation for our own benefit and the future of our children. Thank you so much, and Shabbat Shalom.